good afternoon everyone uh, so i hope that you have gone back to six sigma and you have tried to make sense of it so still if there are some issues we can always discuss this and that is not an issue please feel free to write to me or you can also kind of you know call me on that so today uh, we will talk of human resources uh, in production and operations management this is uh, another topic now we are coming into uh, unit number 4 so let us start uh, human resources uh, some of you uh, would be inclined towards taking hr and you have already done uh, this course of uh, hr management human resource management so there uh, would be something that you would have already uh, talked about and you would have already covered in uh, human resources and uh, riding on to that understanding of yours let us begin our discussion on uh, hr which is human resources and how is it relevant and what uh, context we talk of uh, human resources in production and operations management so uh, let us uh, start this discussion uh, by taking up this example uh, let us talk of pit crews uh, i hope that you would have heard this term pit crew uh, pit crew uh, uh, is a team uh, who actually are responsible for uh, changing the tires uh, of the racing car on the racing track uh, these people are very important people because uh, their task uh, is to facilitate uh, their team to win uh, they are very fast when they do their task uh, and pit crew members are considered as a very very important resource persons uh, they say that the average salary uh, of a pit crew member would uh, go up to the extent of 100000 dollars per annum so when we are talking of uh, uh, the formula 1 racing type of thing we might say that uh, the schumacher has won the sebastian has won and the dex team has won we need not to forget that it is not only these people who win but uh, how do they win is also important and in that perhaps uh, the skills of driving and getting the foot heavy onto the accelerator and having the capability of handling the car is one thing but the people who are behind the wheels would not be in a position to make you win unless uh, you do not have the support of the pit crew members because uh, when you are talking of racing cars uh, the tires gets heat up so they need to be changed and now uh, how much time your pit team your pit crew takes in uh, changing the tires is something that decides that you are going to win or not because it is all about those fractions of seconds if you would uh, like to understand the importance of these pit crew members the jeff gordon uh, who is into the formula 1 business he has realized the importance of pit crew members when the j when the dale has uh, overtook the five of the members of the pit crew of jeff gordon and they said that the deal was uh, around 500000 us dollars so why would you pay that much of money if they are of no use and why would you pay that much of money if only the driver is making you win the race perhaps is won at the pit spots very very important part of it if you would go back to the history of the pit spots you would realize that you are talking of pit spots only being 4 seconds somewhere in 1976 only 4 seconds you are taking to 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 change the tires all the tires of the car to make it ready to again you know kind of you know fly on the roads so the less time that you take uh, the more chances you have of winning yourself so this is where you know these resource persons who are uh, who are who are never into the forefront but they are very very important persons you can put this person uh, analogically equivalent to the people who are working in our 
uh, in our shop floors, who are working in our factories, the laborers who are working in our factories, they are never on to the forefront. But uh, they are the people who are making these companies run. Just to make sense of it, just to let you know, have a look at this video. The car has come, it has stopped, the men are after it, tire changed and the car is off the shoot. So how much time do you take to do this task is essentially something that determines how you are going to perform. This is important, this is very important. If you would go back and read about the pit spots, you will even have the things like two seconds. Look at this, two seconds. So uh, you are winning on to the pit spots. Look at this, pit spots have become far quicker in Formula 1 since refueling was outlawed. With Red Bull changing the tires in a record 2.05 seconds. Two seconds it takes to change the tires. So you are winning the race on the pits. You are not running the race on the roads. You are running. You are running the race, and you are winning the race onto the pit quickly. So uh, two seconds is nothing a time, if you would see. And uh, you know that two seconds is like this, and the car has come. One, two, done, go. So this is when you are winning it, and hence uh, when you would uh, learn about these people you would invariably realize that who are these people these are no simple people these are athletes these are tall people because they might have to jump the wall when the car is about to arrive and they have to do that task in total so you need a muscular man you need a tall man you need an athlete so this team has to be very strong otherwise you are going to be in big big trouble so this is how we are looking at uh, and this is a, a super analogy in context of productions and operations management. Someone who is working behind are actually the people who are responsible for the better performance of yours. So in Formula 1 race, these people are very important uh, and these are human resources. So these human resources are to be taken care of very diligently and equally well into the productions and operations management we have to talk of managing the labor right we have to design the jobs in such a way that people are efficiently and effectively utilized right so in pit crew uh, you have to manage these people uh, you have to use them effectively and efficiently i was talking about that if 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 you uh, have a person who uh, whose task is to lift the tire and to give it to the man who is bolting it up into the car this man has to be a muscular man right so accordingly who will fit into what role every um, every individual is expert in the role that they are actually performing for themselves so this is effective and efficient utilization of the labor and that is what we talk of it in productions and operations management also so people uh, people are human and they are resources they should be efficiently utilized within whatever you have uh, and you have to uh, make these people to realize that they have a reasonable quality of work life uh, and they are working in an atmosphere which is full of commitment and trust. So this is how we can make the people to perform better. Right? So this is the importance of human resource strategy in productions and operations management. One task that you as an operations manager has to do when you are talking of uh, human resources would be uh, to plan the laborers. And when you talk of the term labor planning, you talk of some policies which are related with the staffings, so to staff the people. And you actually take three decisions under this head. You talk of employment stability, you talk of work schedules, you talk of work rules. And if you would talk of general uh, human resources. Uh, you might talk of a lot many other things also. But in context of productions and operations management, these three are the specific things that one needs to do. Because uh, I do not know whether you have sometime uh, gone to these industrial hubs like Gurgaon, Udyog Vihar, or in Delhi, Okla, where there are a lot of manufacturing units. If you would go there in the early hours of the day when the offices are beginning up, 
you would find out that uh, on the gates of many of these factories and many of these manufacturing units you will find some uh, you know the boards with some messages which says that require uh, labors uh, in uh, require labors in uh, two people required for this specific task so why why we talk on that is because that deals with something which is employment stability you as an operation manager has to take a call on to how many number of employees are to be maintained by your organization at any given point of time remember we are doing this under the head of labor planning and when we are talking on number of employees we perhaps are talking of the labors so how many labors do you need to keep you have the two uh, options here number one is following the demand exactly so which means when you have demand then only you take the people in so the example that i was giving you a while ago in which i was telling you that you will find these boards hanging around the gates of these factories asking that two uh, people required uh, or two welders required or two sewers required so you would ask the people to come to you and you would pay them when you have demand which means when you have more production demanded from the market so that is something that is follow demand exactly so what happens in that you have to keep the labor's cost tied up to the production but it incurs other cost it means the cost of hiring the people and the people when they come to you they would ask for premium wages because you are hiring them for a day or for two days or for three days so they are accepting the unstable employment and for that you have to pay them maybe a little higher so this is one thing that you need to take a call on as an operations manager as far as the human resources is concerned employment stability would you like to follow the demand exactly option or would you go with hold employment constant in, in which you say that i am maintaining a trained workforce and uh, these would always be there with me right uh, even in those times when the demand is not much when i am not producing much even in those times you will keep this workforce so in that case you know that the employees may not be utilized fully so these are the two things so the decision that you are taking here in context of human resources is whether you would like to keep the people which are tied up with your demand or would you like to freeze up the number of people that you would require and you are not firing them and you are not hiring the fresh people also but you are keeping these people as constant so this is the first decision that operations manager or the production and operations manager might have to take number 1 number 2 is the work schedule you need to decide on to their work schedules also now for example this is no brainer you know that we can talk of shifts uh, and the rules the rule says that 5 8 hour days is something that you, you should be making the laborers to work on the shop floor so how do you utilize this time that depends on you as an operations manager how you are going to schedule the work of these people the work of these laborers is something that you need to take a call on you might decide on to something which is so much popular now which is flexi time uh, but they say that it is not so good for operations uh, operations management the reason is simple because flexi time allow you to not be sticking to one time and to be little flexible into the in time and into the out time now for example if your practice starts at 8 in the morning you say that i have to work 8 hours in a day so if i am coming at 8 so i'll be free by 4 but if i come by 9 let me be free by 5 if i come by 10 let me be free by 6 so the, the, that window from 8 to 10 here the window from 8 to 10 is such that might work in other offices but it does not make sense into the operations management the reason is simple because the factory has to start at 8 so the machines cannot wait for those 2 hours only when the entire labor would come the plant would run so the flexi time story is perhaps not that suited for the shop floor employees and then you also have this thing being talked about in your text which is flexi work week uh, you talk of Uh, the total number of hours that you can utilize your employees now for example 5 5 uh, 8 hours a day so which means you have 40 hours per labor in every week so how you are going to uh, you know utilize this 40 hours every week so you can have 3 days uh, in, in one week of gentlemen working and you can also make them to work 4 days in a week but these 3 and 4 days would be like Uh, 12 hours a day instead of 8 hours a day and that makes uh, somewhere around 40 hours 
So in that way you can talk of flexi time and flexi work weeks. But what has been realized uh, by productions and operations team is that it has always been better to stick to non flexible time and let people be attentive to the time and let them respect whatever time they have to come they have to come right so this is how the work schedules uh, what you can do is instead of thinking of let's say time and flexi work week you better be thinking of uh, the shifts how you can utilize the people and even the big companies are also making the people to work in shifts then the third decision which you have to take is work rule so the work rule uh, basically talks of who can do what and when they can do it and under what conditions will it be executed so it is about the atmosphere of the work right it is about the conditions in which a worker is going to work so these are the rules which defines the work procedures which defines the work which the laborer has to do you as an operation manager you have to define you have to tell you have to be clear you have to tell you have to disseminate this information that who can do what role and when is it that they have to do it and what will be the conditions in which your labor will be working so all these things uh, are to be decided uh, the text says about the human resources that you as an operation manager has to handle right so essentially what we are talking about is that uh, operations manager is not only dealing with the physical production and the things associated with that but as a part of their operations work they also have to handle the manpower they also have to handle the human resources one very important thing that we can talk of in uh, human resources is the job design uh, you would have read the job design into your hr Uh, and you know that how important is this as a concept uh, many a times uh, you can have a very new job you as an operations manager can design uh, and that when you talk talking of a very very new job to be designed then you are talking of the tasks that constitute this job for an individual so a job design is kind of a comprehension which speaks of the tasks that would be required to do by any individual to be able to be part of this job right so as a part of job design you would be determining what is to be done how it is to be done which would include tools why it is to be done you would include the purpose so a job design would be kind of a sheet which 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 actually speaks about what is this job what tools would be required to carry out this job when this job is supposed to be done why this job is supposed to be done and then we also have the components of job design you would have heard about these terms like job specialization job expansion psychological components self directed teams and motivation incentive systems out of these you would have heard these two terms if i am not wrong into your course of uh, human resource management so these all are considered as a part of job design it is as if now i would have told you into the class when kishore bianu now though i am giving you a very different type of example but i am just trying to let you know that how you can think of a job design and a new job and how this job is to be designed and how it is to be made uh, into black and white when kishore bianu was taken as chief belief officer by the future uh, uh, when kishore bianu has hired dev patnaik as chief belief officer of future group now he was creating a new job and the job was chief belief officer right so he was actually creating this job of chief belief officer now the question is uh, chief belief officer cbo uh, so this is cbo chief belief officer Now the question is that who is he what is he supposed to do when he will do it what are his deliverables what is it that you would look for when you are hiring anyone for this post of cbo these all are the questions so when you are creating a new job you have to talk of job design also so the job design would explain what is this and that would be point number 1 uh, what is this job point number 2 who would be able to do this job point number 3 what is it that is expected out of him point number 4 what tools are required everything that you write about this job would actually be kind of you know the job design 
So now with this, let us talk of these components of job design, which the text says necessarily has to be part of your uh, job design, these elements, these components. First component is job specification. Job specification, they say, is about breaking the bigger job into the smaller, smaller components. And then you talk of specialists who would be doing those smaller jobs, right? This is what kind of, you know, we talk of. So when you are talking this, then we are actually talking about that uh, story that we have already discussed in the opening beginning of operations management, wherein we were talking about standardization, breaking of the larger task into smaller, smaller pieces. And then for the small tasks, you actually find out the people. And when I have the very specific super duper example of this specialty is the standardization is uh, is assembly line that we have already covered that we have already discussed. So in assembly line, someone who is putting up a steering into a car now his task is maybe only to fit that steering into the car. So because he is doing this task repetitively, one time, two time, three times, number of cars being produced in a factory in a day. Uh, he is actually repetitively fixing up those steering you know, into those cars. Now he is now becoming a specialist of steering columns, right? So this is the specialization, and the, the, this specialization is attainable only because that the larger task was segregated into smaller, smaller parts. So a car manufacturing is a huge, huge task. You segregate into many parts. So the, there would be a task of fitting the tires. There would be a task of painting the car. There would be a task of galvanizing the car. There would be a task of fitting the seats. There would be a task of fitting the wires. So these are many tasks, which a greater task can have as its parts. And then all those smaller, smaller parts can be assigned to one individual. And this one individual would then be a specialist. And what he does is something which is called the specialization. So when you are hiring someone, when you're creating a job for assembly line and that to at a point wherein you require someone to fit the steering column, he has to be specialist on that. They say that it was first noted by Adam Smith, the man who is behind the modern economics in 1776. He actually have found out in manufacturing and service industries uh, and he has reported that we can actually increase the efficiency if we talk of standardization, if we talk of specialist, if we talk of specialization. So whenever you are designing a job, what is it that at the core an individual is supposed to do that has to be part of the job design? And that is something that what specialization, what is it that you are looking at? So that would mean that when my university would have hired me, uh, for all the things that I could potentially do, I could do many things. But what is it that I would essentially be looked for is my teaching abilities maybe, right? So this is the special thing that is required for this job. This is the basic thing. So this is the specialization of this job, right? So this is how the job specialization is a very, very important vital component of the entire job design. So what do you get uh, from, as a benefit if you have this job specialization very clearly defined as part of your job design? A greater dexterity and faster learning. Greater dexterity means improving the performance. Uh, dexterous as a word, if you would go in dictionary, that would mean someone who can use both of his hands. So which means uh, increasing the scope of your work, uh, getting it more speedily. And that is something that you can do if you would adopt job specialization as part of your job design because by job specialization, you are inviting specialists and they would be far, far much more speedier than the people who are not specialists in that thing. So job specialization uh, would, uh, hence, uh, would hence speed up your production thing, right? So it also uh, gives you benefit in the sense that it, uh, it, 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 it decreases the lost time because of the changing of jobs and tools because one individual is doing one, one task. So you would then be using the specialized tools and you need to pay only for needed skills. So when you are hiring a laborer, you are only paying for his this skill, which is uh, for which he is taken. So if you are hiring a welder, you are paying only for welding. So if there is an individual who is good at 10 things, and if you are hiring him, he would ask definitely more because he is a multi-skilled people. Right? So this is how we look at job specialization as to be a very, very important part of your entire uh, job design thing. So job specialization, very very important 
Now, then comes the second part of it, which is job expansion. Uh, where is the job standardization was speaking about uh, was speaking about being expert in one task, dividing the larger task into smaller tasks and ex attaining expertise in those smaller tasks. But uh, it was also found out that repetitively doing, doing a task, doing it time and again might also result into boredom. Right? So, people might be feeling a little bored because they have been doing the similar tasks. So, to get rid of this, your job design, that statement, that black and white thing which speaks of that what you need to do should also have a column of job expansion. Job expansion is about adding variety to the jobs. Right? Adding variety to the job. So, which means uh, you would not be only asked to do this job, but you may be asked to do the other jobs also so that you do not kind of you know feel bored out of it so uh, this is written here it is intended to reduce boredom associated with labor specialization and how do you exercise your uh, job expansion is you actually look at uh, job enlargement job rotation job enrichment and employee empowerment you look at all these things as part of your job expansion so we are talking of job design so this is how we are doing we are talking about job design that is jd in jd we have these parts so the first part we have already discussed that is job specialization in second part we are doing job expansion and the job expansion has further parts which are job enlargement which are uh, job rotation which uh, and another so you need to remember this hierarchy so that you do not actually uh, confuse it because all these terms are kind of you know uh, related uh, with each other so heavily that you might tend to confuse it so this is how the branch that we are making right so then comes the third component of your job design so a job design should have all those things taken together now so uh, how do you exercise how do you implement job design so that uh, how do you implement job expansion uh, so this uh, would be exercised by all these things. So this is job enlargement. So what is job enlargement? Job enlargement is when you are essentially uh, adding the tasks which are to be done by a uh, laborer or by anyone for whom you are designing the job. Right. So job enlargement would essentially mean adding the tasks to his current to-do list which requires the similar skills. So to uh, make sense of it, I am teaching management students. Uh, this is my job specialization teaching uh, in management. But my job might be enlarged if I am asked to teach into say uh, into some other courses also. Now, for example, if I am asked to teach economic students, if I am asked to teach commerce students, so this is my enlargement. Why I am giving this example is because it requires the similar skills. Whether I am teaching management or I am teaching commerce, it would require teaching skills only. So the skills required are same, but my task has been enlarged because something has been added to it. So now only management, then commerce, then economics also. Right? That is job enlargement. Then you have job rotation. Uh, job rotation is uh, about moving from one specialized job to other. And this is about the variety. Uh, this is about the change. Uh, that is how we look at the job rotation. So it might be that the other skills are required in this. Uh, you, I might be asked to do something else which is other than teaching. So that can be job rotation. Job enrichment would be uh, adding the planning and control to the job. Job enrichment is also called as vertical extension kind of a thing. So what is this vertical extension? Now for example, this is what your present job is which is teaching. I am just taking this example of teaching. So if I am asked to teach T1 also, so which can be commerce, so I am writing T1 as commerce, I am asked to teach uh, uh, hotel management also, that, is, that can be HT, hotel management T2. So this is horizontal expansion. Horizontal expansion is this enlargement. But when I am asked to uh, take care of the above level things also and to the down level things also, now, for example, <coughs> if, if, if a teacher is asked to take care of the admission process, to take care of the files of the students, the clerical tasks and all that, 
so this is the lower extension and the upper extension also if he is uh, allowed to take the administrative decisions so when this happens now the controlling thing is coming so this is how it is looking it is now control of the job so this this vertical expansion is something which is job and job enrichment and then you have the employee empowerment which means <coughs> helping the employees take ownership of their job they are responsible for what they are doing right so just to make a little more sense of it this is what i was telling you the job enlargement and job enrichment the two confusing terms a little two minutes more onto it this is your present job the similar tasks uh, task number three and task number two the similar tasks which are giving to you which requires the similar skills is the enlargement that i have already told you and when you are actually getting the planning done and when you are also controlling it then it is job enrichment so the enrichment is vertical extension and job enlargement is horizontal extension so this is how we kind of you know look at these two things job enlargement and job enrichment and any job design should have these components very much part of it then we can also talk of the psychological components uh, as part of the job design uh, what these components believe is that individual have values and they also have attitudes and they have emotions and these things taken together can affect the results right so after all these are humans and these humans are to be treated humanly also and when we when we realize this we in fact talk of the psychological components so it rests on the ground that effective worker behavior comes mostly from within the individual and uh, this actually can be traced back to the hawthorne studies which you all must be aware of the studies which were actually done in the western electric company plant uh, and where the lot of experiments were done and those all experiments were done to understand the understand the impact that the social structure impact that the psychological environment can have on the performance of the labor set large and many of those experiments which were conducted in uh, 1920s at the western electric hawthorn plant has actually uh, proved time and again that the social system in the workplace is far more important than all the materialistic luxuries and all the materialistic things that you are providing to your neighbors so they would uh, work more better if they are made to feel uh, if they are made to feel that they are working in a system that is taking care of their feelings that is taking care of their psychology so uh, one of such experiments was that people were like trying to uh, work out things and then there was this light they were dimming the lights uh, the dimming the lights if you would look at rationally should have reduced the productivity of the laborers who are working there but uh, the people who are working have taken the reduced light as a challenge and they have in fact bounced back and they have worked more effectively that was because all of them has taken this as a challenge so this is the social system that is more important and that is what also you have to make part and you have to acknowledge it and you have to accept it as part of your job design so uh, uh, this is the thing that i was discussing with you the social system is far far more important than the intensity of light one more thing your job design has to be such which actually improves the morale uh, confidence the acceptability the adaptability of the workers to the extent that you need not to uh, guide them you need not to tell them what to do but they themselves becomes responsible for the task that they are supposed to do and when we are talking of those things we are talking of self directed team self directed means they themselves are directing themselves towards the goals right towards the goals they, that that is what they are doing and when they are doing this they do not need an extra motivation right so uh, we know that for any company there would be some group of empowered individuals who are working together for a common goal and these empowered individuals if you can make them feel empowered uh, they can actually uh, turn themselves into self directed teams which should be uh, such a fantastic thing to have happened for any company right so why would this happen is because uh, Uh, why would the effectiveness would come because it provides empowerment to the employees and it provides the 
uh, it provides the core job characteristics very clearly to the people they actually understand they know it and the company is also meeting the psychological needs uh, of the of the of the people who are working there and that is what you actually look at as to be uh, look at as to be the psychological needs meeting psychological needs are being met by the people at large so this is how we actually essentially are looking up at as uh, the self directed teams if you would uh, look at and if you will try to understand this concept we can eventually talk of something which can be called as a job design continuum uh, continuum is something which is a spread uh, onto which the various things can potentially be placed you are starting somewhere from specialization which is the first component of job design and then you are reaching to the self directed teams and in between comes the empowerment and enrichment and enlargement and etc right so uh, then uh, you actually uh, have to make uh, the job design as such that uh, people uh, who are part of this uh, job design should be themselves reaching to the self directed teams it has to be like that it should facilitate this thing to happen right so this is the idea of job design it should take um, it should take the employee through all these stages right and that is where uh, the job design uh, performance is checked that is how it is seen whether it is able to take the people towards the self direction work is not externally motivated then uh, we can also talk of motivation and incentive system uh, we know that when we are talking of the people who are working on the shop floor uh, we have to give them monetary uh, benefits we have to give them monetary incentives we have to give them monetary motivation but at the same time uh, we actually have to uh, make them psychologically motivated also uh, because uh, if the half tone studies are proving it that uh, the social setting the social acceptance the social belongingness is more important than uh, the materialistic facilities which are provided to them that actually is a testament to the fact that the psychological mindset of the people is far more important than the materialistic things which are maybe provided to them and hence uh, the motivation incentive system uh, that has to be the part of the job design because we need to tell that what is to be given to the people who are fulfilling these jobs who are uh, who are found better for this role and this is what is to be given to them so in that uh, incentivization in that motivation uh, you have to make space for the psychological motivation also then with that there is one more thing that we talk of in, in human resource management uh, that is uh, that can potentially impact uh, the performance of the people and we call it as ergonomics uh, and the environment of work why these two things are important because ergonomics we have touched upon uh, in our discussion the physical interaction that we we have done in the class also maybe we have talked about ergonomics as to be a study of interface interface means exchange which means the encounter when we are uh, talking of how the interface between humans and machines can be made better we are talking of ergonomics so ergonomics is about making the interface between humans and machines easy uh, so you have to kind of you know think uh, of the mouse uh, if you would go back into the history of mouse making you would realize that how the mouses were in the beginning when the computer has just come into the market and how are they now so today you will find that somewhere at this place you will have a dumped up uh, space to rest your thumb on so that your thumb do not feel a little unadjusted when you are using this mouse you will find that even at these places you will have some bumped down place so that your fingers can rest very easily onto the mouse now what is this this is ergonomics with time uh, you have realized that uh, by doing this the interface between the mouse and the human hand would be better and the human hand would not feel fatigued by using this mouse have you ever thought that how on earth was it decided that 
when you talk of your uh, school chairs when you talk of your school desks what should be the ideal height of the school desk so that your so that your spine doesn't get hurt so that you also do not uh, spend your time in taking care of your body position rather than listening to the professor so that way uh, all those things so what should be the ideal height of the chair uh, how should you sit this is all part of your ergonomics and uh, hence uh, by studying the work you come to know about the human factors and by studying these things you can actually make the human machine interface lot easier so the example can be mouse and keyboard and not only these things but you can take of tons of some uh, such other examples look at this video it will explain the ergonomics to us Worker carrying out tasks at a computer workstation. In this case study, we see an office worker carrying out tasks at a computer workstation. The worker is sitting at an untidy desk with different hazards visible. These hazards include poor lighting, the lack of an adjustable seat, the lack of knee clearance under the desk due to storage of boxes the monitor height being set too high, and the phone being located at another desk behind the worker. The worker is unable to maintain a good posture and is slouched over the desk, unable to get close to the monitor. The phone starts to ring and the worker leans over the side of the chair to answer. The employer needs to complete a risk assessment of the workstation in order to develop a better way of working, which reduces or eliminates the risk of injury. The steps to be followed are so that 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 those two videos speaks uh, uh, and let us know that ergonomics is an important science and specifically in the conditions when we are talking of the laborers who are working across into the factories now imagine someone working on the assembly line he has to do the similar task time and again so if his spine is in some uncomfortable position he would not be able to continue this work for his shift which is of maybe 8 hours long so that is how this ergonomics will help us in uh, doing and making the interface between uh, humans and machine little easy and that is how it makes your humans to perform better and that is why it is part of our human resources so you as an operations manager has to be conscious about the interface that your laborers are having with the tools that they are using and with the working conditions in the working environment they are into in so this is uh, something about the ergonomics and to help uh, ergonomics and to reach to the stage a uh, while ago when I was asking this question that how on earth is it decided that how tall should be the bench, how uh, much should be the height and how much uh, high should be the sitting position for a chair. Now they, they, that all is actually arrived at by doing method analysis. So method analysis actually is a technique by which you actually uh, are assessing the methods which are followed while carrying out a task. So this is done by focusing on how a task is accomplished, how a task is done. So I ask you to go to uh, a library and to pick up a book out of the shelf of the library. So if there are 100 students that have gone to that library shelf, so all 100 would be recorded and they would be seen that how they are actually accomplishing this task. So focusing this is the first step on, of the method analysis. Then uh, uh, what do you do here is that you actually look at the movement of individuals, you look at the movement of materials, you do that by using the flow chart and the processes chart 
and then uh, the activity charts are formed activity chart encompasses that how the machine and the humans would actually be working out and that would also include the body movements which will be the more micro motion charts so the, actually the list is not exhaustive you can also talk of the other things which invariably will tell you that uh, how the human body is working is tilting is bending is straightening itself in order to carry out a task and that when you are doing you are actually doing method analysis right so method analysis is an important thing doing which you would actually uh, be making the interface between humans and machines a little better so this is a typical flow diagram which would actually tell you that uh, how the, the, the various things are there you are sitting here the wire is here so how the things would move how would you go from here to there and all that so the flow charting can help you in looking at uh, how the task actually are being carried out and what is the method that is followed right you can also talk talk of process chart in this uh, process chart would mean uh, what process is followed while you are trying to carry out a task or when you are trying to execute a task now for example uh, this is a typical uh, this is a typical task which is requesting the tool purchase and when you are requesting the tool purchase then you are doing some task there would be some activities that you would be doing if whatever the order in which those activities were done if they can be penned down then and, and they can be graphically presented now that would form a process chart now for example uh, in this case now when we were doing of this you have to request a tool purchase so uh, here the symbols symbols are very clearly written o is operation uh, and this arrow is transportation this uh, uh, square is in impaction b is delay and the inverse triangle is storage so this is uh, how the first thing is happening so you are writing an order because you are ordering a tool and this is uh, where the operation is taking place o is there after o would come d d is delay if the order would be there for some time onto the task and from there it will be transported this is the arrow and after the uh, it is transported to the buyer and then you actually would come into the in inspection of it examine if it is okay then you kind of you know give it to the buyer so this is how the process chart and the flow chart for the same thing can help in understanding how actually the task is being carried out and that would actually might give you some inputs of how where are the bottlenecks where are the potential fail points and you might actually address those potential fail points that might help you in making uh, the interface uh, in making the carrying out the task which is better to the people so that they do not kind of you know uh, they do not uh, they do not uh, they do not feature and experience the fatigue when they are doing this task so similarly you can go into google and you can find many such uh, tasks Uh, which actually would have the process chart and the flow chart into it, which is explaining how things are done. Right. So this is what helps into uh, ergonomics. This is what uh, helps into making the interface between human and uh, machine a little more beneficial, a little more easier. And the idea behind is to make the people work more rather than to feel tired out of the task that they are assigned to. so now that means that you as an operations manager has to uh, actually look at these aspects of your resources so the first aspect that you need to look at is to think of what type of uh, employment you are looking at are you looking at the demand based employment so when the demand comes to will hire or you are talking of the stability in employment you will take the people and you will keep them on irrespective of whether you are producing or not producing both have their own positives both have their own negatives then you as an operations manager has to look at the job design which has got many components into it to call them component or we call them elements so it is such a fantastic thing uh, maybe i would ask you to prepare an assignment wherein you are forming a job design for any new job that you might potentially look at uh, for any industry that you might be interested in going for right so preparing a job design which might have the job specialization the job enrichment the job expansion all those being part of it and then thereafter you as an operations manager has also to look at the method analysis and you also have to be familiar with ergonomics so that to make the 
communication between the machines and the laborers will benefit so that you actually can increase up your productivity so this is all we need to look at into uh, the human resources uh, in operations management i think that uh, we can uh, call it uh, a day uh, as far as the discussion from my side is concerned if you have any questions you can let me know uh, by typing into the chat box and while you type your questions and while you ask your questions uh, let me tell you that we would also try to discuss a uh, little more about uh, human resources uh, the standardization of certain things how to standardize the things that also we will discuss into the next class uh, and we will try to schedule the classes now as per your time table so in that uh, uh, discussion we will try to extend this and uh, i think we are very good as far as our syllabus is concerned and uh, if you have any questions now you can let me know otherwise we can call it a day so i hope that all of the uh, students who subscribe to this course are present uh, someone so someone is not here uh, if you can let me know uh, you have everyone i think amarta uh, perhaps is the only one who is uh, not present if i am not wrong the rest all of them seems to be here so any questions from you uh, if you have any uh, not amarta it is vasam yes sorry my mistake vasam is absent the uh, rest of them are here and that is fantastic any questions or we should kind of you know close this discussion so since uh, uh we have covered it and if you if you are not recalling any questions now if you have a question in mind even later on you can drop me a mail around this or you can also even ask it uh, next time when we will sit again for uh, the discussion on production and operations management so thank you very much everyone uh, it has been wonderful uh, to be talking to you around i will shortly let you know the next schedule of this class Yes, Sandeep, I pino wasam is absent everyone else is present so thank you very much you have been great audience don't forget to drop me your questions if there are any thank you so much